That's a deal. Kimi ga da bi da ba du ba. It's not that I hate that movie either. It's just if I had to watch the last third of it again, I would be furious. And if I hear that fucking song one more time, oh, you'll hear about fifty. I'm gonna. I think really I would just watch it on mute with subtitles. I like. It. I'm like I ain't doing it again, movie. Not this time. Uh, you done? A, yeah. Did you do your homework, Dylan? Writing your script. Yeah, I just did. It. Okay. Yeah. Per usual. Sorry. No, you're okay. There you go. Okay, well, Dylan, I think we're, we're ready when you are. Sorry, I haven't done it in weeks. I don't remember how to do it. On our short hi- hiatus, so you take it away. Hi- hi- hyenas. Hyenas. Our yep. short hyenas. <laughs> All right, so. <sighs> what the hell was that? Who was Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. To. Dramatic. The Effin' Movie Podcast. Oh. <laughs> we're back from hyenas. <laughs> Africa. They almost got us. Uh, the scavengers almost bit away this review, but we came back. You know this hiatus is gonna make no sense because like we're gonna be up to date yeah. on it. Viewers aren't gonna know. You guys won't know well, it. But if, it's... You, if you recall, there was a three week period where no videos got posted. Yeah, yeah I noticed. Uh, right. Mason yeah. noticed. I didn't notice. Um, my AC broke in my house though. It's still Ooh. broken. It's broken till Friday. It's very hot. That's Yikes. rough. It's miserable. It was. 79 in our inside our house before I left mm-hmm. going to 80 what the fuck yeah that's like in a house that's getting sticky quick yeah it's, oh, it's sticky yeah I'm I can't, sure it's I can't play cards right now because it's just a, it's just the sleeves you know yeah. it's, it's miserable um anyway uh so Dylan what are we talking about here today oh I'm glad you asked Dylan uh we're talking about uh Colin Farrell and Ralph Fiennes and I forget the other actors Brendan name. Gleason Gleason there we go um, uh, undercover hit in Bruges. That first part may be true, but not the second part. Undercover? The, the hit in hit. Bruges? No, you said an undercover hit. I yeah. said the first part maybe. Well, oh, I mean, in plot, it's, that's the plot. So, Dylan, can you tell us a little bit about the movie? Yeah, you got it. So, I'm, thankfully, I, I gave you that pretense ahead of time. Um, so we got Colin Farrell and, uh, Gleason and, uh, there are two dudes, both hitmen, who are now hiding out in Bruges, Belgium, which is apparently a quaint, lovely little town. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on who you ask. Depending on who you ask. <laughs> and uh, apparently they're they're hoping to get Colin Farrell uh, kind of incognito at the moment because he had just uh, did a hit on a priest who... Uh, Snape. He... No. Was it? No, it was not Snape. No, it was not Alan Rickman. You, it, you clown. I mean, it it was not. Similar. But it was uh, what's his name? He was wearing black. It was, it was Grandpa know. from um, Willy Wonka. No. Oh no, he's uh, he's from Game of Thrones. He was the yeah. leader of the Free Fall. Whatever his name. Yeah, no, that's actually the right actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't Alan Rickman. It was I not Alan Rickman. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, not Snape. Anyway, uh, yeah, Colin Farrell kills a priest. Accidentally kills a kid in the middle of it, and but you uh, don't find that out. You don't find that out until about two thirds away in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, that he killed the kid. Yeah, about you the... see it right after he shoots the priest. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah but that's you don't, like right, that's you don't... a bit into it. Like they have a like a, at least a solid day of being in, in Bruges, Bruges, right? Not really. Movie runtime, not. Oh, okay. Time. I was gonna say like yeah. in the movie time, it's like twenty minutes into the movie. That's about halfway, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because but... they're they're like hiding out, but you don't really know why until right. they finally figure it out. Yeah. But anyways. So anyway, um, yeah, they're hiding out in Bruges. Uh, Hijinks and Sue, I guess, would be the usual, like, fluffy run-up. Um, people are like, well, do we kill Colin Farrell? Do we not kill Colin Farrell? There's, like, a little bit of a, like, well, honor thing going on, and whatever. Hijinks and Sue. Uh, we're going to get into the discussion, because I think that's uh, where it goes. So, I, I want to I wanna start off right away and say that the tone of this movie was definitely a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was not quite what I think we were expecting going into. No. I think, based no. on the trailer, we were thinking Snatch. Yeah. And this is not Snatch. No. No, it's not in, in a lot of ways with it. And nor, and I was being hesitant to say even, like, put it in Snatch, like, definitely not in quality category, just on the trailer. I was, the trailer is very vague about the tone, but I kind of get it now after mm-hmm. watching the movie. I'm like, okay, when you're going for, like, a dark comedy that tiptoes an emotional line about halfway-ish through the film and kind of tries to straight face it and use the comedic elements to it. I can see where that's a hard to cut trailer. Um, so I'm a little apologetic for the trailer for it. But the first half of it is a very jarring movie. I didn't know what I was what it was trying to be 
Did anybody else feel the same way? That was it was just like, man, it, it just doesn't yeah, want to stick the, to it. Yeah, the lane. movie takes a little bit to really pick up yeah. and like find a pace at which you feel comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. Because the whole beginning of it is just like so much like whinging and moaning about being in a place that you don't necessarily want to be in. Yeah. Meanwhile, the other guy's just walking around, just like, oh, that's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Very Gleason's nice is truly enjoying the historic like European aspects of it and. Uh, Colin yeah, Farrell is just like, fuck, this place sucks! Like, Yeah, like, he yeah. he is just kind of awful and very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you don't really get why until you understand, like, it's probably, it doesn't fucking matter that it's Bruges. It could have been anywhere. Yeah, and he would have yeah. been in a bad mood because he had killed a kid by accident, yeah. and that was really what was bothering him. Right. Well, except for maybe the Bahamas. He concedes. He's like, well, that's what I'm saying. I think, yeah. like, like, he was coming from a bigger city, yeah. and he was stuck in a very rural, county-ish mm-hmm. uh, town, but you're right. It could have been anywhere. Yeah. I'll but, tell you something else that's awful about this movie is the audio mixing is abysmal for this movie. I can't remember it. I don't know if it was just because like I was watching it on a different Wait, website. Were you on a website, or was it the... I was on a website, okay? okay it was well, on it was, yeah, oh, it was on Prime. Yeah, it was on Prime. Prime. Well, you had to watch that it with ads, really though. sucks yeah. because I, yeah, right. I I wouldn't care to watch it with ads or whatever because I tried finding any way I could to put subtitles into this movie and could not. So it made I couldn't, a difference. I, I couldn't <laughs> yeah. understand a word these people were saying, and so I had to turn my sound system all the way up just to try to hear them because they're whispering the entire freaking movie. And so I'm trying to understand what they're saying, and then when he shot that priest. With the gunshot and everything, blew my speakers <laughs> yeah. out of the water. Caesar was upset. <laughs> ah, it, it was to be fair, could, yeah. all, I, it was awful. I don't feel like the it was mixing. A, yeah, the, I thought the mixing to was be fair, fine. Though, though, anyway. Yes, the whole movie was very quiet, and that's fine. And there was only two sequences where there was a loud-ish moment. Yeah, of, and that was my issue. Was it wasn't like the audio? I didn't notice, but like this movie's tone, if you want to call it that, it was very like like the. You know how like an engine idles and like it starts to go really low before it starts to like sputter out and it's like mm-hmm. shaking a little bit. That's where this movie was like eighty percent of the time, and then finally at the end it, it started to like level out mm-hmm. and get a normal idle. It didn't even peak. It didn't even touch the gas pedal. It just finally idled. It a thousand percent peaked for me, and it made me more irate than I should have been at this movie because I could not understand a word they're saying. And when this is like the movie's based on the dialogue and the comedy comes from the dialogue, and I could barely hear it and barely understand it. And I couldn't pick up on the punchlines. It greatly affected my <laughs> rating for this movie. You're gonna say that's my own fault. I don't give a shit. I this will. is where I watched it. This yeah, like I, it, I, I think that sucks for the movie and for your experience. Right. Because I don't think it was actually that bad with a legitimate version of. No. It. Yeah. Having watched it on Prime with ads, uh, which mine also had subtitles going. I don't know how much I was like reading those or not, but those I will compare this there. exactly to Paprika for you. That, this is my paprika. Hmm, to be fair, no he, he did it to himself. So it is. Uh, that, That's what I said about paprika, too. Nathan's like, but well, he won't be forgiving in the score, man. Uh, he will just complain. You're, I'm not. You're Colin Farrell in this movie, Price. Yeah. You went into Imbrudes. <laughs> you went into Imbrudes wanting to be miserable. You got it. And then you and then you hated the experience. I was because not of wanting it. to be miserable. I've been wanting to like this movie because I've had multiple pe- people tell me I should like this movie. So, okay. I'm, I'm glad you did point out the language aspects of it, though, too. Because the uh, trivia, tying it in... Um, Originally, the characters were actually meant to be British because, obviously, Harry... Harry? Yeah, the main, like, the dude they keep reporting to, I think, is Harry. Yeah. Yeah. The Ralph Finn Fiennes. Yeah, Ralph Fiennes. Voldemort! Actually, the Harry Potter character that we're going to be. Um, yeah, Harry, who is kind of like the, like, hitman boss kind of guy who's, you know, making them do all this stuff to begin with, um, is British and everybody else seems to be British, but they are Irish, but that's only because they're natively Irish, like, so Colin Farrell and then Gleason both came in and they're like, eh, fuck it, let's just change the characters. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was, like, a nice little, like, easy enough change where it really doesn't change much of anything to the plot. And I appreciate just the little tiny effort it goes forward. That being said, I did have to throw on subtitles even with well-balanced audio because sometimes the accents were so naturally heavy at times. I was just like, I think I got it. But it was like, it's kind of like when you listen to Brad Pitt and Snatch. I know I didn't mm. want to make, like, a one-for-one one reference, but it's right, it was where my brain was at at the time. Mm. And he's he's speaking the, what is the language? I'm forgetting. The... Oh, it was, uh... Um, Dugs. Uh, gypsy? Uh, yeah, the gypsy language. Well, yeah, yeah it there's, is. Yeah. There's, a, there's, not a, there's, a, there's a different term for it, right. Like but, a slang for something. Right, right, and he's like, it's not really English. It's not really this. But, yeah, so that that was kind of hard for my Native American ears. 
um, to sit there and kind of pick up on it. And I did have subtitle songs for it. So that was kind of like a love-hate relationship with it. That being said, I do appreciate how much anti-American humor is in this movie, though. Um, there were at least a couple jokes that landed for me uh, through... Cool. Once I started to get on board with the tone, which admittedly did take longer than what I was comfortable with it. I think it probably took me like 20 or 30 minutes before I was like, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to laugh. Like... And then my brain was, like, switching gears and ready to hear the comedy aspects of it. I mean, maybe the best joke of the whole movie was when What's-His-Name was up in the bell tower, and Colin Farrell met the three American people down <laughs> well, the line. Well, you're not going to get make it up in You're there. not going to make it. Look at the... Look at you. You're fucking elephants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're fucking huge. And, and then later on, in, him. later on in the movie, you find out they had a heart attack going up into <laughs> yeah. the movie. Yeah. yeah. the whole thing closed yeah. down. This... Yeah. All right. I, I want to talk about the... Yeah, there's a little bit of, like, interweaving that yeah. they were doing. Um, I wish, you know, again, so much of this is just like a little bit of like, I wish this was Snatch a little more. Yeah. Because they, there's elements of it, there's a bit of a feel to it that harkens to this other film that right. executed something so incredibly well. And this, this does have a whole lot of like, you're just kind of circling around the same group of people. Like this yeah. town must be incredibly small yeah. because they are always constantly just running into each they other. They reintroduce the characters yeah. pretty darn well, whether it be the little slum guy that, like, gets his <laughs> the, ear shot or his the eye. The guy that got blind. Yeah, the like, guy got shot in the eye with the blanks. Um, fun other trivia note about the movie is that little tiny town of Bruges had to have uh, Christmas decorations all the way until March <laughs> up because that's what was their shooting period. And, yeah. And, like, the film was like, yeah, we're, we're going to do this until March. Sorry, everybody. Keep your shit up. Um, I so, I just thought that was kind of a funny little yeah. one. Oh, look at that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do think that the humor, whenever I finally got on board with it, was landing me for me throughout the movie. And definitely not like giant knee slappers or like audible gigantic glass, but it was definitely getting chuckles out of me. Like, just the little small nods and prods here. Something about Colin Farrell talking about, he's like, just his obsession with dwarves and getting into the, like the yeah, imagine he's fucking, he has to get called a short ass, and then people don't even call him the right name for it, and then it just kind of keeps going on and on and on. Yeah, but, hey, wait, before you get off that, we were just talking about Silicon Valley before that, Mason said how they oh, keep yeah. beating a dead horse over and over and over. Mm -hmm. This movie, I thought, did that to a T, especially with the dwarf thing and with the fat thing. Like, they just sat on those two jokes, and the city. They ran the, those three jokes well, into the freaking ground. The, okay, so the best part of the movie was the elephant Americans. The <laughs> worst part of this movie was at the very end, you got this, like, clarity, I guess, of him, like, uh, basically facing his demons. And, like, while he's, like, what, limping towards the, the dwarf guy, mm -hmm. he literally says, no, it's... Or, like, I can't remember, it's but uh, child, Ralph Fiennes guy, a child, shoots right? him. Yeah, it's yeah, a child, yeah, yeah. and then... But I thought that was such a stupid payoff because, like, like he basically found a dwarf and this guy killed a kid and, like, they were just like, hey, there might be a connection here. Let's throw them together yeah. at the very end of this movie and make Ralph Fiennes kill a kid and eventually off himself. Uh, maybe the worst ending I've seen with something that got this much attention because, like, this movie was nominated for Golden Globes. Colin Farrell, I think, won. Golden Globes. For... Nobody cares about that award. I think well, the, I mean, I think the Martian won Best Comedy for Golden Globes. So those ones... <laughs> okay, so you have the Oscars and you have, like, the Golden it's Globes. It's literally the Oscars oh my God. and then the Golden Globes. Anyways, but, yeah. like, you want to talk about the dwarf and, like, sure, picking sure, the sure, dead sure. horse. Yeah, like, yeah. The first time he was introduced was great. The second time, you're just, eh, you know? And then, like, the end on that... Uh, yeah, I have ebbs and flows with like the like with the dwarf jokes, right? Because like him waving at him later, and then it's just like, uh, and then later it's explained, and he's just like, "Why aren't you waving at me?" And he's like, "I wasn't waving anyone, maybe then a horse." And I'm like, eh. but then there's something about the the dwarf going on about race wars, and then him karate chopping a dwarf that I was kind of back on board with. I was just like, Ugh. this whole movie yeah. you know, plays heavily with the humor of the callback, British and, humor, yeah. Yeah. And whatever you want to call it's it. It's very right? European humor, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. and that that's, again, where it just feels so similar to Snatch, where it's just, mm -hmm. like, the mm -hmm. constant, like, callbacks and, like, things where it's just like, oh, the guy chose to get the bullets that make somebody's head, head explode, explode. And they shoot and the shoots yeah. the dwarf, and he can't tell that it's a kid now, so he right. thinks that he's killed a kid, too. Yep. It's, like, a, a much less stylized much more subtle kind of like same like concepts with like the back and forth narrative telling and like tying that into the jokes and stuff like that uh, and i definitely appreciate snatch more for it um 
not that we have to keep comparing it to Snatch, because this really is not a fair comparison no, between the two. Just because they happen to be European-ish type comedy movies based on that one, but yeah, they're so wildly different that I... If somebody said, oh yeah, I watch this movie because you like Snatch, I'd be like, uh, what a weird recommendation you gave me for that. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, the humor, the humor is so like back and forth in the lanes for me that I... Uh, it's hard for me to stay on with it. And I really like Colin Farrell just as gen in general with this. By the time he's trying to be more sympathetic, it does feel strange. It does feel like a very big jarring shift in, in the tone again. And I think that's just the thing I keep getting hung up on. But <clears throat> I will say overall, I don't think that I like, I, I hated what the movie was trying to do though. It didn't feel like I was necessarily suffering. And I think that in part made because I didn't watch it on one of those really terrible websites getvirus.com or whatever it was. Um, virus is here I, admittedly, <laughs> if I'm Price and if I had to do the audio thing, I would be probably more, much more annoyed with this movie because anytime that movie makes me do that, I'm like, I just don't even want to watch the movie. Like, you know, at the very end, also, just another part that I didn't like, mm -hmm. just to really beat the shit out of it, um, he, it's implied that he might survive. Yeah. It's implied mm -hmm. that he is, like, making it into the ambulance. And he, like, got somebody. shot in the heart. No. Four times he got shot no. in the gut. I looked at the, the gut, gut in the shot. Gut. It was gut. He got, inside. like, he got shot around It was around gut, here. boy. But anyways. It was gut! You get one gut, gut shot, and it is, like, questionable. You get shot two or three times. Mm -mm. Yeah, probably. And not. not with the head blowing bullets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing too. Yeah. Like regular bullets well, just to him. But. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe the skull has enough like. Yeah. Right. Something. Maybe there it's like a pocket it, of like, air yeah. just implodes it, right? But like through like a body it skin, just... it's just like oh, I'm not gonna explode through here, yeah. and it yeah. like makes it all the way through. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Harry, I don't know how that works. Harry's comment about looking at the gun zone. He's just like an Uzi. <laughs> I'm not gonna go shoot a school full of like African. No, it's or like uh, being in LA and like shooting yeah. uh, like twenty. Uh, like I'm not gonna do a drive members. by of gang members or yeah. anything like that. Give me a real gun, and then he gets one pissed off. Like okay. Can we talk about his instincts as a hitman and how they're so poor? Oh, they're the worst. Oh, he, he yeah, should have never like, been like, a I've got to go take care of something. He's running down the street with a gun, just shooting. <laughs> yeah. Where are the cops? <laughs> all this too. Well, Bruce, that's, that's what I had in That's here. what's so charming about in him. Belgium. Oh. They just must hear gunshots all the time because during that last like twenty minutes, yeah, the the civilians are just like, well, let's well, let's let's just and meet. And nobody this, even courtyard. calls for the guy who does the no. does the jumps off and does the suicide off the tower either. No. That's no. a little jarring for them, but the gunshots on. <laughs> like, yeah, well, well and the people that were in that like doing that film yeah. too, they were just all kind of standing around like looking at this guy that had not being freaked out yeah <laughs> not not huh. running away yeah yeah is there like, oh well i mean he's not going to shoot us he was just here to shoot this guy yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. hell well, that's fine <laughs> yeah, yeah we, uh, this guy's clearly not crazy it's, he's it's, just going after this one person well, he did it wrong hands. and he's solving the problem <laughs> okay, which goes back to a joke that, alright, I, I do like more jokes than I think that I care to admit in this movie. Um, there was like two that landed for me. Where, where, Colin, Farrell, where Colin Farrell talks about uh, self-defense, right, and he's like, well, he comes at you with a, you know, with a bottle, that's 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 a deadly weapon, you know, yeah. and that's, you can put your life in your own that, hands. And that, that gets called back to whenever he right, punches, when he punches the, the woman the... And, and then the guy at, at dinner. Uh, which then comes back again yeah, whenever he's that's how he gets train. caught and pulled off the train yeah. because they were Canadians. Yeah. Shocker. It's always the surprise Canadians. Yeah. Thing. No one ever expects the Canadian Inquisition. That was so strange because, like, uh, he's also just this, like, mindless person who, like, again, as a hitman, you would think that you'd be able to, like, uh, draw back some of that, like, crazy aggression and some of this, like, mm. this nature that he has the entire movie. But he's a loose cannon the entire time. He punches yeah. that woman he is in a restaurant for no control. reason. Like, right. well, I, okay, so... They were bad well, she had a bottle. Well, yeah. the, yeah. Guy, so, the guy came at her, him. Yeah, the guy starts uh, to kind of, like, verbally kind of, and then he just... He, he goes to a level. But as a hitman, him. do you think that you he, could subdue somebody without... Punching them I, in the I face. Feel like no. I really need to clarify something that I don't know if you picked up on. Probably he, didn't. He was not really a hitman. Yeah. That was his first job. He's intentionally a bad hitman, right? Like that's kind yeah. of okay. the, that's the running thing. No, I just thought that they were like a, a duo. No, no, that was no, his no. First job that was his first one. And I did not know that. That's why there's even yeah. the scene where he's no. talking with uh, Gleason, whose character name I can't remember. And there's he's talking about he's like I don't think I'm I'm really cut out for this. He's like well your first job you killed a kid so yeah, yeah. probably oh, not. Oh my god! In that scene where uh, Colin Farrell I think his name's Ray in the movie he yeah. tries yeah. he tries uh, he's at that that on the bench and he's about to kill himself while Gleason's about to shoot and kill him mm -hmm. and then he's like 
Wait, don't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though this would solve what? literally oh, every problem that right. we have right God, now. God, that was so dumb. Listen, when you're Catholic, you he's like, he'll go to hell this way. Yeah. But if he gets killed, he goes to, you know, maybe there's a... Then there's, he should have just I shot him before he killed himself. I kind of, I kind of was too, to be too. honest, because there's a very, there's kind of like that, like honor and and re almost religious like undertone a little bit at times with yeah, it. Yeah, uh, I last, mean the whole like significant of the blood of Jesus thing that right. he has in that one church. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, last bit of trivia, really quick, is that uh, Gleason's character. So part of the reason why he is so honor bound with all of this stuff. Um, you know, he mentions before that his wife gets uh, like killed and then. Harry kills the guy who kills him or whatever mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But apparently there was a deleted scene where um, the cop investigating and stuff like that was dirty and was one who got his wife killed to begin with. So then he, uh, Gleason, ends up killing the cop in the first place and then Harry kind of lets him off, but then they said they kind of like switched it over. But that was supposed to be the narrative, like the narrative background that they were supposed to have yeah. with him to kind of have like why he's an honor-bound person mm -hmm. instead of like, yeah, because it seems like he's just like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to let Colin Farrell off. And then he, he doesn't really care about the whole hitman honor i guess that's kind of being implied on the tail in the movie um and then all of a sudden he's just like all right yeah well i guess if i have to die i have to die and then he's just like harry kill me you know i owe you everything which i thought was kind of a strange twist too because he's like fuck you but then he's also like this is the only way this could be done and i could see that but it is a little strange narratively just to sit there and have harry come in and start blasting people uh but the thing was like he was as good of a character as the other two bar no i mean he was you're talking about like the main guy yeah yeah yeah. The, yeah the boss he, guy right yeah he was fun enough i got as much you know chuckles out of him as mm -hmm. i did the other two you know like he said the uzi part and the the blind guy you know mm -hmm. he confronted him directly like making fun of him yeah right. i mean he he had plenty of lines and all of his lines came in the last 21 minutes of this movie versus the hour and 10 or so that you had with you know, to begin with. Yeah, Ray Fox yeah. really clutches it out towards the end with it. I do appreciate the little note that the the homeowner does whenever she writes him the voicemail mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And she's just like, I am not I'm a secretary. Not, yeah, I'm the man. I own this with my <laughs> husband. husband or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, so speaking of length, I mean, do we want to get into that? Yes. 107 minutes. Because and the this, word this fuck movie... was mentioned 120. Yes, every one minute and 18 seconds. Yeah. This movie says Which I didn't fuck pick up on. Ratio. No, this movie's no. actually really subtle about it, I thought. Yeah. Also, I will say, I'm, I'm really proud of this movie for its length. It, yeah, it, I, I really... Let's get into let's get into the segment, can we? Uh, we're almost there. Right, well, okay, yeah, let's this, get into the With you like saying that. that, like, the the Hitman thing, that actually answers another one of my questions, oh. was to, like, why there are two Hitmen in groups nowadays, or, like, oh. in this universe, but, like, that, I guess he was training, or he was... Mm -hmm. you know shadowing him versus yeah, he's kind of like the hitman mentor is kind of yeah. like the perspective and I, that, that solves that too because i was yeah. sitting there i was like i don't feel like they ever worked he was doing together. laundry what's space first of all you know we're playing doing laundry i, I feel like basketball. i picked you up say play. all, i'm playing chess at the same time you say yeah. that and i universally <laughs> cool only watch movie whenever <laughs> i watch movie i'm a simple man a movie on the screen i will say i also did not have the subtitles on and i chose not to because i thought that the language was fine. I, didn't I, think... I thought it was fine. There was just sometimes they would go on a bit of, of a run in lines, and I'd be like, I caught short ass, what? Like, mm -hmm. And then I'd have to go back with it. Um, but it was only early on. It's one of those things where you kind of have to get used to that. Yeah, like, and then you, you kind of get there. But yeah, yeah. Get your feet in there. People watching Snatch for the first time, I had to do it one more time, would, would be like, oh, God. And then you're like, yeah. oh, you kind of get it. Yeah. I thought we were going to talk about the shape of this movie. I was trying to, but Mason wanted to close his well, closing thoughts out. We were going to finish it. Listen, you know. I, I, I steer the ship price. I got You've it. You've been steering this ship for a while. There was one cop the entire movie, and he was on the train for no real good reason. Oh, yeah. And his I only job was a pair killer. of cops in that scene. Yeah, there, there was two. There was yeah, one in the back, and then one, oh, one that the had the. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. sorry. Man. Sorry, this, people have thoughts to talk about because but we have thoughts and I mean, feelings. You said that there were no police in Bruges. They had a police station there because they took them back to Bruges. That's true. Oh, That's yeah, because they, they also. Uh, Colin Farrell gets bailed out at the end of the movie by his drug dealer girlfriend. Yeah. And, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll give you your coke and ecstasy back. And she's like, you know, Irish humor. Um, anyway, let's get into the shape of this movie. So, one more thing. I think he only had one shirt on the entire He time. had the same outfit on throughout this entire movie. Yes, had, that was a trivia fact. Yeah, it was something yeah. about he had it buttoned, yeah, and then he, he did not have it buttoned. Like, right. his sports coat was, like, buttoned sometimes, and it wasn't, but he had the exact same Same outfit, outfit throughout the entire movie. Anything else before we close there? No, Price. No, Price. No, Sorry, we're like talking about a movie. That's why we had a podcast. We'll talk about movies. <laughs> Shut up. Fat, thin, perfectly fit. You know it. You love it. I don't have to explain it because I literally am not allowed to anymore. Mason. Um, 
uh, for as much as I'm talking about this movie and, and its difficulties, uh, I think that it's a very fit movie. Uh, I just, it all started with the trailer. Uh, the, the trailer being so like, pow, bam, crazy scene, this is happening, we want you to believe this, and then going into it, it was very different. Um, but the final product I thought was very fit, if not maybe a little chubby, uh, but at the same time, you can't take anything out of this movie, I don't think, that makes it better in the end. So, uh, I, yeah, I would, I would say fit. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the movie's 107, so it barely goes even, like, an hour and a yeah. half. Yeah. Um, it's not trying to stretch anything too hard or anything like that. I think, really, it's not, for me, I don't necessarily look at it as, like, adding, subtracting for a movie. It's more just putting more, more of a tone up front and kind of fixing the tonal issues. But that's not really a runtime movie or, like, cutting out scenes or things like that. If anything, you kind of just shuffle the scenes you have to, to kind of create the tone a little bit better um, earlier on. But, yeah, I think the movie's fit. This movie Did doesn't last very long. Did you say hour seven? Hour, no, sorry, oh, 107. 107. Minutes. Minutes. So, hour okay. 47. Yeah, okay, hour I was like, yeah. what? 107. Yeah. <laughs> I must have watched the, like, ultra Ex director. Extended cut. Or something. How must it fucking feel? <laughs> <laughs> How many hours well, have, I, have I gotten put into How here? it feels is that, to me, this movie's kind of fat. Nah. Uh, like, you, you, get, you get an hour into this movie, and you're just like, man, there's still 40 minutes of movie left? That's... there's. And they're basically where they started. Well, like they, they well yeah. at, at that point, it felt like it could maybe kind of wrap up, but yeah. then it's like, no, there's still a lot of movie left. Mm. Yeah. Like, it just kind of seemed like it was just sort of sitting there, open with nothing really going on, and then it's just like, oh, no, here we go. We're, we're back into a whole nother round. And I think that they played, like, the romance aspect. We haven't mentioned the romance aspect at all. Colin That's Farrell terrible. found right. well, romance, this girl yeah. who, like, who was kind of charming. They kind of hit it's it off. She's charming. Like, but she's... when you were saying, like, that open book with, like, nothing really happening, like, I feel like they were just, like, sprinkling some of that along and just saying, God. We hope this is yeah, enough. felt like they just kind of popped her in as she needed to kind of come <laughs> yeah. in, right? Like, maybe he finds love. Maybe they'll buy this shit. I don't know. Maybe this like, is cool. Well, we need a reason for him to come back, so... True. Uh, I, yeah, like, it's weird because I feel like they wanted you to root for him and that relationship, even though it's, like, they're both a relationship awful. between a hit person and <laughs> a, a drug, drug dealer, dealer slash... Um, yeah, slash, yeah. you know, robber of tourists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, that's all, guys. This is... <laughs> I like that. that yeah, I don't like that because that interrupts the whole fucking video yeah. with, so, with Ben, Big Ben, or whatever. A really funny thing: my dad used to work at a furniture store, and they would have all these clocks. I love that noise. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they were all set at different times, so you would just randomly hear bells all the time. So it'd be like two thirty-seven. Like a cathedral. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like two forty-one, and it would just. Sean. I'll, I'll, cl I'll close out Nathan's thoughts and this movie's definitely chubby. I felt exactly how Nathan felt around that same point. Like, if you boil this movie down, it's where you basically start with two hitmen go to a small city, uh, a, a botched hit goes wrong, pretty much nothing happens until the boss comes to town to start uh, some shit up. And Gleason kills himself and then uh, he shoots the other guy. Like, this movie does not have much to it and just, like, tries spreading fat everywhere it can just to like pad out the length or something it really thought it had something with its dialogue and jokes and acting but not enough to merit an hour and 47 minutes cool yep i think uh, is there a question involved yeah Maybe? so uh the question is going to be if you change the tone of this movie to any other genre to sit there and okay you get this movie and you're like this the humor is not working or the the drama is not working and yeah. you have to add or subtract in a genre to kind of make this movie make more sense what do you do what do you add into it mm. erotica hmm. it's never a wrong answer it's a... <laughs> they'll never see it and in the middle never let them know your next no, movie no you know what i know how you, i know how you do it i know how you do it you drug sequence uh you uh, you when they're all doing drugs yep. you cue it right into hentai <laughs> and then it just stays hentai <laughs> for like the second half of the movie um and it, w it would be a crazy so it's decision. like a kill bill going into the yeah into scene. yeah into lucy lou's whole segment with it yeah, yeah um that's, that's very drastically different <laughs> i mean it would be i uh i won't lie i think you just straight up turn this into a dark rom-com 
I think you push the. I think you start to take away a little bit from like the. It's not the heavy off. stuff. It really isn't. That's why I don't think it's too bad. Like it's not too hard to add a couple more scenes with the drug dealer girl. Yeah. Make yeah, that more I, fun. I, I think that could have been good because I think it would have been interesting to try and really actually make the audience root for a failed hitman and drug dealer. Right. Yeah. Then, like, I, I kind of like the out, idea you know? of that pitch. It's right. It's like they're so so interesting mm -hmm. and like dynamic together that you can't help but want to root for them despite them both being objectively really bad people. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. I think you double down on the comedy. You you bring Ralph do you, Fiennes do you in bring more? Will, do you bring Will Ferrell in? No. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, if Price uh, would have given it a 10 if he did. That, 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 is, that, is, that is the... He could have been a very good caricature you know, of an Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know that, uh, you know that that meme of, like, the water thing that's, like, spewing water and then Flex Seal, you just smack yeah. it? Yeah. That's Will Ferrell on some of these cameo movies that he does. Yeah. That's not the answer here. No, no that's you bring in You bring in Ralph Fiennes more... Um, interwoven into this story actually show his face not just a phone call yeah and and a, you give colin farrell an actual script versus this oh yeah all the time that <laughs> yeah. you can't you can't relate the to the goofy physical like. humor. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. to say that colin farrell is maybe the third best actor in this movie is sad because he obviously is in virtually every single scene yeah um you know the next best character is probably uh, the Gleason character, we can't remember his name. Not for he was charming. No, he was yeah. he was fun. He was light. Yeah. Uh, and then the best character, like I said, is Ralph Fiennes. And in that order, you see them the least amount. So like mm -hmm. the best character, you see the least. The yeah. least character, so, you say the most. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's if you can, this movie's not far off. I really don't think that they missed it by a ton. No. They should have really just. I wish they would have reviewed this movie at the very end and been like, I think we can tweak this. Mm -hmm. I really do think that this is a re... Uh, yeah, you know, you can reconfigure this a little bit. in some ways is close to being a being good pretty good. movie. Yeah. 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 And I think it kind of falls a little short. Yeah. yeah. I agree. But I think that's a good transition into... Did you say it, John? Uh, oh, I was just... Just kind of chiming in for the most part. Yeah, cool. that's fair. Yeah. Rom-com, erotica, extra comedy. So we agree that the movie okay, in <laughs> yes, hentai. Price, uh, you're always going down that route. Yeah, God, Price, get te time. tentacles Shame off the brain. Can't help. I'm it. sorry, Kelly Senior. Happy birthday. <laughs> By the time you're watching this, this will be probably out on your birthday. <laughs> she learned what hentai is a couple months ago. Don't look it up. From a middle schooler anymore. Oh, from, from a middle schooler. schooler. From a middle schooler. Yeah, because apparently the middle schooler was like searching for it on uh, like a school computer. Did so he just like, ah. was it just Google hentai too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, classic. Yeah. <laughs> classic. Classic middle school move. <laughs> Porn.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all those middle schoolers get trapped. Is that trapped. a real door in the, domain? Do you think? Uh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, right. that I'm... has to be a very valuable. Do you, domain. Do you think <laughs> they just don't touch that one? Like yeah. the gods yeah, of the internet are yeah. just like. This one can't be. This is sacred territory. Yeah, we can't. We can't let anyone have this domain. That, there's no way that one doesn't full ripe with viruses. But um, let's get in the scores. Nathan, start us off. Uh, it's kind of hard to really pinpoint an exact score for this one because it does have a lot of good, but it wastes your time with a lot of filler, mm -hmm. and it generally just ends up missing the mark overall. I'm gonna give it a six and a half. Mm. Mm. Too shabby. Well, I will take that down drastically because <laughs> to nobody's surprise, he first of all, my viewing review. experience was terrible. I, the, like I said, the audio mixing on it was terrible. And again, you say it wasn't on yours; it was on mine. That's how I experienced it. I looked it on JustWatch.com, and I could. It didn't say it, it had it anywhere, so I must yeah, have missed so something. I had it on the free one, which is what I clicked on. Well, you could have watched it on Prime. It, <laughs> yeah, literally. Well, yeah, I, went, I wish it, it actually didn't even have to have Prime. It was free. Yeah, or something. it was free. free that's yeah, what yeah, I had. Yeah, it's but it's hosted on Prime. Well. I looked on Just Watch and didn't see that, so I don't care. This is my experience. This is what I had. Like I said, just like Nathan with Paprika, this was incoherent to me, and this was supposed to be my language. It's supposed to be English, and I couldn't understand a word they were gibbering out the whole time, and when I could, it was just jokes that they kept rehashing and rebeating all over, just multiple times, just beating that same joke, and it just... 
wasn't funny. It, to me, like, it wasn't funny. And dark comedy is, like, my favorite style of comedy, and none of this landed for me. I thought that, like, the fat joke that Mace, or that Mace was talking about with the Americans, I thought they went on for that too long. Like, he could have just made fun of the fat people and then just went on, but... They had a little race around. The guy I forgot about the race. Stupid. The, the, the guy, race was stupid funny. I, I got to it. The well, guy got he's tired. walking off, and yeah. then like his partner's coming out. Let off like, it. Oh, that, they, they can't go up there and yeah. get around. <laughs> he just about gets in a fight. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. And that, all that just, it wasn't needed. Like, there's just so much of this movie <laughs> was, was not needed. Like, it was just padding out stuff that did not need to be padded out. There was useless conversations they keep reusing the same thing over and over. It's just... I, I didn't enjoy this movie, and I really thought I would, so I'm going to go 2.5. Mm. Didn't enjoy right it. Right in the middle. But I, I, I will say something I haven't say it, said yet, that the the song that they used whenever um, Ray is getting uh, ch- chased throughout the city was well, really the outro good. song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was the outro song. It was like right before he got shot. Like well, yeah, yeah what I'm saying is okay. like the, the last bit of the film whenever the music starts playing with all that. Outro. No, before he gets shot. Like I think it's when he's still chasing scene. around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the credits okay. stuff like that. I, yeah. I can't remember it, shot. but I do remember it being like, all right, this fits. Yeah. You know, I, did, I did like that, yeah, which totally. is why I'm not giving it a two. Um, sure. This movie, so Price said earlier that, like, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you basically were like, this movie had really nothing, and, like, you can't really hold on to anything for it. And it's not, I guess it just really fell short of everything. This movie does have, like, five scenes that I really, really enjoy and that I will remember. The elephant American scene, I, I'm not saying that that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. No. But this movie... But it, it made me laugh. It, oh, yeah. it fit. And I was like, cool, thank God, finally. Uh, another scene was um, the scene where Gleason's character was on the phone with the hitman. You know, and he was like, Br- Bruges is great, right? Am I am I right? Uh-huh. Wasn't I, just, didn't I knock it out of the park? And he was like, yeah, he kind of hated it. Mm. He what? <laughs> and he's like, no, but... It, Maybe it was the arches. Yeah. Maybe he just missed the arches. Then they had this double carriageway. Right. Yeah. And it just really and threw him off. It must yeah. not have been and here. And he's really went. sold on it now. Yeah. And he's like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> just... <laughs> Some would say that it went way way too long. It, it yeah, does that, go on too long. Yeah. But, but my is, goodness. Yeah. Was, maybe it was just because of the rest of this movie like, kind of sucked. I, I, I don't know if they wanted you to feel tense through all that, but you don't. No. You know, it feels so it, silly. If yeah. anything, it feels relatable to, like, if I was, like, talking to, like, Hannah about something and, like, she was getting really worked up and I'm like, no, no it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just... just you tapping the brakes. Just right. So There's slightly. just vegetables in my low... Honey, it's it's fine. I, I'll eat the broccoli. You know, like you're kind of just talking. I thought it was relatable, but I did think it would dig you onto. Yeah, yeah. But for all those reasons, this movie, like I said, it's not too terribly far off. The problem was that this the trailer was rough. Went into it with expectations. The movie took an hour for me to really start enjoying it. There was a lot of just misses that it had before it actually got good. The whole chase scene was great. The last twenty minutes of this movie were fantastic, except for the freaking ending and I forgot all about that till just now I'm gonna did give it did you not like Harry shooting himself in the head though I liked it but it was for a really stupid reason it's stupid like, but I, I appreciate that like, it's consistent like they shot the dwarf just to like like I said just to tie in the child fact yeah. and to make him like double down on his morals of like oh if you kill a kid you have to you know you have to die this movie's a five and a half it, but it is so strange because it could be pretty good uh, but yeah I, it was rough for it to be a comedy, for it to be Colin Farrell, to have all these people in it, they just needed to redo some stuff. Mm. It really would have been good. Yeah. Um, I think I'm, I'm probably only a smidge hotter than Nathan on this one. And I think I'm going to start with just saying my score is a 7. Okay. Um, this, is a, this is like 7 to 6.5. Mason even saying 5.5. It definitely feels like that early on. But it starts to win me over towards the mm, maybe about 30, 40% of the way into the film. Um, because the jokes did land for me, and I think in part that's kind of like the comedy aspect doing what it needs to be doing, is that if you're kind of like chuckling at it and then, <laughs> lay off, fatty! Yeah. It's just him running away from that. Yeah. Um, just a little dumb moments here and there, uh, Ray, Ray finds, I think, whenever, again, he comes in, and the whole film just feels elevated from that point forward, for me anyway, um, for the most part. I think the only part I really don't like is, is how long the, like, shoot, drag scene goes on. That goes on for a little too long, and I would say most of this movie's problems are that things go on for too long, um, or it takes and the tone, which again I've beaten a dead horse about as far as the, you know discussing his words. It's clearly it's the biggest flaw for me in this film. 
Um, but overall, I didn't hate it. I don't. I didn't land super negatively as far uh, as far as like my experience with it. I think once I was on board, I was like, I can get through this as long as this doesn't like a two hour movie, and it isn't. It's uh, like you know one. I mean, it almost. It almost. It, it, it's right, like but so but see, it's it know, stops right before I'm about to leap off the train. Right, it just says, "All right, I see you. I get it. Go on." And I'm like, "Okay." So I, I respect it for its restraint on that one. Um, Otherwise, again, I, I think there's enough in this movie that I actually do like that, gosh, with, I, I'm kind of mirroring Mason's thought, this movie with polish and, like, some editing or some changes could, like, definitely has right potential. And I think, for me, that's what pushes it to a 7, instead of just landing somewhere in the 6 to 6.5 category, because I, I think I liked it enough that there was drinks there that I just enjoyed. Um, and I could hear the audio fine, so that was <laughs> a benefit, as it turns out. Um, wheel? No, critic score. Ah, it's been a second, guys. Sorry. In Bruges, uh, Dylan, what did the... Okay, well, tomato meter. Tomato meter. So, tomatoes uh, gave this an 84. They were they were ripe. They were ripe on they this. Ripe Audiences picking. were 87. And honestly, that really surprises me. For yeah. anything dark comedy, I feel like, is always misunderstood going in on, hmm. on uh, reviews. Just wonder stuff. about, like, Rotten Tomatoes. And, like, if that's, like, updated since then. But then again, I guess people are, like, I mean, if like, people aren't watching it, then the that's, like, the impression, yeah. right? Like, so... so. Yeah, that's like kind of like that touch and go of like movies that are what like 10, 15 years older yeah. now. Is that you know have people gone back to rewatch it and said exactly? Thoughts. Would they think the same about it now? I, I do think this uh, is a movie that on rewatch either really defines my feelings on going up or going down on the score though. I feel like knowing what this movie is is definitely a, a helpful addition to it in rewatches. Hmm. Price won't rewatch it. That's I gonna be his most... comment. I'm gonna beat him to it. Got I you. think it's most okay, you'll keep going. of this movie <laughs> is you're going to be waiting for those same like five jokes that make you laugh. And then like once those hit, you're just like, oh. Yeah. They'll probably yeah, be lost in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to spin the fucking wheel. It's been right. forever. God, it's so good. All right. Make sure it's nice and stable. Nice and stable. Nice and stable. Is it my movie? Nope. Nope. Nathan, what are you picking out of? Well, ninth? my own category. So oh, that is else Nathan. Else pick it. Oh. Well, what is it? You want me to pick it? Was I next on your list? I couldn't remember who was... Uh, we're all... I'm the only one that we're we're hasn't tied. Five. Everybody else is tied. Can I, tell, can I get uh, what category it is? 19, sorry, 1980s. Oh, that's American not me. Animation. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, I want it. Can I give it? Sure. If we're all tied? Go ahead and have it. Uh, we are watching... We were just talking about this. I know. This. That's why you can have it. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> All right. You want to watch that because of the Chip and Dale movie? Uh, no. We were, we were literally... I hear it's delightful. It's not really animated, though. It's live action. Well, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is literally hybrid, but it has animation throughout the entire film. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like Pikachu. I mean, I'll leave that to Nathan's discretion, but sure. I don't consider this, like, if I think an animated movie... I mean, I, I, it's just an animation, not... Right, and then when it says... That, that, that's your call. Yeah. It's your category. All I know is there's a busty woman in this movie. Oh, that's yeah. That's all I remember. Yeah, no, she, she's busty. <laughs> and good God. I don't want it. This is a long trailer. I don't want it. <laughs> no, shut up. Shut up. What the I, hell is that? Jon Snow. Bro. I is have it? a feeling this trailer is going no. to be, like, not even a thing about the movie. It's just going to be... Look at no, the... Look at the, the hot... Like, go through the thing see if there's, like, any live action. Yeah, okay, there yeah. it is. It comes really okay. quickly. Yeah. No, I know the movie. No, I know. I'm saying this trailer, though. Dude, I love Tom and Jerry, so this is going to be like... Isn't that the guy that's in no. Space Jam? No. It's Nedry. No, it's not. Looks like Stars. Despite the amount of cartoons in this movie, this is not a kid's movie. The last time I watched this within the last few years, I keep thinking, wow, this I, you, this movie's not for children. Is this from the 80s? I have never seen yeah, this movie. 89, 88. Uh, I won't lie, I've seen this movie a shit ton. I watched so, this movie all the time as a kid. Disney World used to have like a little shopping area towards the back of Hollywood Studios that was based around this movie. Really? Mm -hmm. Which makes it even funnier if it's not a very kids friendly thing because it was also next to like this massive uh, Honey I Shrunk the Kids <laughs> like kids playground area. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's a very kitty kind of area, right? But it fairly prominently features Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Mm -hmm. uh, admittedly, I can kind of see the argument there. Who Framed Roger Rabbit's like pretty insane for the because they have Warner Brothers and the Looney Tunes stuff crossing over on properties, and notoriously that would never happen. But um, yeah, the deal. <sighs> I'm trying to remember who directs this. My brain wants to say Spielberg, but that sounds very wrong. Alright, uh, this movie could be low key good. Dude, this movie is good. I'm telling you. Yeah, I feel like it probably is going to be pretty solid. It's a Mechus, that's who. Yeah, Robert's a Mechus. This has yeah, all the... Right. And Steve, yeah, Spielberg was a producer, that's right. So he was the one who kind of bargained the deal for the properties. That's why they got away with getting as many stuff as they get in later. This is such a weird, like, touch on, like, like they keep saying the tunes and stuff, because that was just a bag of... Yeah. That was kind of like, you know, the Acme or the, the Dynamite, from, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it all is. I, It is Casablanca meets... I don't know, Chip and Dale Adventure or something <laughs> like that. The it, it's such a, yeah, I, I God. I, I don't know. I'm I'm actually really I'm looking forward to talking about and reviewing this movie though. But uh anyway, that's our review of In Bruges. Make sure to tune in next week for Who Frame Roger Rabbit. Price, where can they catch us? Everywhere. Here. <laughs> uh make sure to hit that bell to make sure uh, you know when we <laughs> upload these uh, videos. Sometimes we don't even know. We never do. <laughs> and uh, uh make sure to send the comments below if you've seen In Bruges, tell us what you think. Some people have this on their top ten. Steven, if you're watching this, yeah, for some what reason, the hell? You never told us why that was like one of his favorite movies. I literally asked him. He was just like, dude, like I literally. Here was our conversation. Well, I was. He was like, oh yeah, I'm watching that in Bruges movie that you were talking about. He's like, oh sweet, how are you liking it? And I was like, I'm only halfway through it. He's like, where are you at? And I was like, uh, he just karate chopped a dwarf. And he was just like, lol. That's he's like, that's perfect. That's exactly why. And I think something about just that mentality of like, it's just a movie that gets so like ludicrous and ridiculous. Steve's not really a big, like, he's going to tell you all of his feelings and thoughts. I was going to say, Steve not over ask text. us about plenty more funny yeah. karate chop and dwarf right. movies. Not, we probably give him some more, not over text. more stuff to laugh at, but I don't think this was it. Bro. I think this being a top ten film is pretty bold for him, but eh, what are you going to do? You know, everybody has their own movies. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Who Framed Roger Rabbit uh, will be on next week-ish. Well, I don't know. Times are weird. I shouldn't even say that. We don't know when this is going to upload. But it'll upload uh, when we watch it and review it. That's what you do now. Um, let us know in the comments below if you like what we're doing. Otherwise, make sure to tune in next week for Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Bye, guys. Bye. Back-to-back -back Dylan movies. <laughs>